Uh, we've been joined on the line by Dr. Rashid Haruna. He is an international relations analyst and we want to find out from him really how does this play out on the international community front. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon and thank you for having me. Is there, I mean, from your expertise, do you think there is this sort of an agreement between Ghana and China for which reason we are unable to prosecute persons that come into the country and blatantly flout our laws, where we just ask them to leave the country. Is there any such agreement? Well, think? No, there is no such agreement where a bilateral agreement where it allows uh, a foreign national to come into sovereign Ghana and flout our laws and desecrate our uh, environment and then leave. You know, no, there is no such agreement. And, and usually what happens is that by an international agreement, when you are in a country, you respect the laws of the country. Right. When you are caught doing something wrong, you have you go through a due process. You are given your day in court. And you go through the, the, the due process, and then however the judgment comes, then if you are acquitted, of course, then you have you are free to leave. But if you are not acquitted and you are found guilty uh, as a result of the, the court proceedings, then you have to uh, abide by whatever the, the law says in Ghana. But to have this lady, and in fact, she's not even the first one. If you mm. recall, Aisha Huang yes. had the same thing. And for some reason, she was whisked out of the country. Right. And she did not stand trial. And then this lady, who is suppo also supposedly her sister, mm. we are having the same thing. And then, ironically... Hello, Doc. We seem to have lost uh, Dr. Rashid Haruna on the line there. He's an international relations expert, was trying to help us understand what the possibilities could be, whether or not there was that kind of an agreement between Ghana and, and China, or maybe any other country, where you know, their citizens come into our country, break our laws, and all we do is to just let them leave. And uh, maybe what then, from the expert opinion, would be Ghana's stance? if we prosecute these persons in the country? Uh, could it hurt the relationship we have with these other countries? Uh, that was actually going to be my next question, but uh, we'll uh, try and raise him back on the line and conclude that interview. You know, I mean, so if you're just joining us, the latest is that the Ghana Immigration Service has deported um, Wang Yang Feng, who uh, we are also known as um, Aisha um, Huang, or Helen, Helena Huang, I beg your pardon, and uh, she was stopped uh, are the ports for illegally transporting rosewood. Now, there is a blanket ban on the cultivation of rosewood any, in any part of the country. But she had come into the country, cultivated it, but uh, quite several containers filled with rosewood, and she was just about uh, moving it from the northern part of the country to the ports and then out of the shores of Ghana. But she was stopped before she could do that. Uh, Dr. Rashid Haruna uh, has uh, joined us again. Thank you very much for reconnecting. So the, the, the next question I was going to ask is, um, if we actually do take the decision to prosecute these persons in Ghana, do you think it is going to mar the relationship we have with any international uh, country, um, specifically China? Absolutely not, because, I mean, they all understand, if you go to China, if the Ghanaian goes to China, and he breaks the laws of China, they are subjected to the laws of Ghana, to the rigors of the laws of, Ghana, uh, of China, and they are taken through court, and whatever the court decides is what the rules is going to be. And that is exactly what happens in the United States and anywhere in Europe. So just because someone uh, is tried in Ghana, as long as we give them the due process, they are presumed innocent before you know, uh, they are pre presumed innocent and not just guilty, you know, um, then they go through the process and whatever the decision is, I think mm -hmm. international law respects that. So, no, just because we take a, a Chinese national through the course does not, uh, it's not going to impact our bilateral relations. And then we've had very good relations with China for a very long time since what does, uh, the, the, the 50s. What, what yes. does the, the constant 
deportation. Well, this is the second such one that our eyes have caught. Yes. But what does a constant yes. deportation, you know, say about us? Does that question our sovereignty, you think? Well, you see, you ask a very good question. What it says about us, those who are involved in doing this, is that somehow we do not respect our own laws. We are not standing firm to prosecute people for, you know, breaking the rules in Ghana, especially when it comes to environmental issues. You know about, you know, climate change and this rosewood and other type of wood. It takes years, decades yeah. for them to grow. Right. And these laws have, have specifically been told that you cannot do this. So for us to allow not just one person, and also the other uh, one, uh, Aisha Wan, also had to do with uh, the environment, yes. with this girl I'm saying stuff, and then this other lady with our wood. So yes. it just tells people that we are not serious about our mm -hmm. laws, and it does not speak well for us. For us. It's Thank very you. bad. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rashid Haruna. Uh, he is an international relations analyst and helping us understand what, what could actually even ever happen between Ghana and China if we had decided to prosecute Helena Huang here in Ghana.